Good morning and welcome to morning prayer. It's Friday the 21st of January and um, today is the fourth day of the week of prayer for Christian unity. It was also the lesser festival of Agnes who was a child martyr at Rome in the year 304. Now, Agnes was a beautiful girl about 12 or 13 years old and she refused marriage stating that she could have no spouse but Jesus. Her suitors revealed her Christianity which is at that time was condemned as a cult. And in punishment, she was sent to a brothel. Now, awed by her purity and presence, all but one of the Roman youths left her untouched. In his attempt to violate her, the one soul attacker was struck blind, whereupon Agnes healed him with prayer. Later, after refusing to renounce her faith, she was murdered during the persecution of the Christians by the Roman Emperor Dilation. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of the righteousness draws, dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A song of joy. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lays open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Now the psalm today is psalm number 149 and it's a call to praise, to praise God in music and dance because he has chosen his people and helped them to victory. Psalm 149 also calls to be ready to fight because this is a call to praise with music. I've chosen um, a sung version of the psalm today and it's sung by Jason Silver. So I'm just gonna share my screen with you so you can hear it. Being the family dog. Sounds great, doesn't it? Right, a bit of an advert. I thought I'd queued it up. Here we go.
for joy as they lie on their beds. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. fitting as it was a praise, a call to praise, to praise the Lord with music and dance. <clears throat> now our Old Testament reading today is from Genesis 9 and I'm going to be reading verse 8 to 19. Now this is the part of the story um, of Noah and the flood and it is one that we're fairly familiar with. As children we tended to think of the story as one of animals and rainbows. This is a story about God's love for animals, about remembering God's love and promises each time we see a rainbow. As adults, we realise there's a darker side to this well-loved biblical narrative. God is so angered by human rebellion that he floods the whole earth, wiping out nearly everything in a fit of divine rage. This is a story about a God of wrath who is ready and willing to strike down sinners. Now, neither of these interpretations alone are the whole story. A true story is that God has many ways of calling us back to the harmony that he intended for us. Now, our reading for today is the part where God establishes a covenant with Noah and his descendants. This reading tells us that God is putting aside forever the option of destruction and seeking us as God's own. So Genesis 9 verses 8 to 19. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock and all the wild animals. All those that came out of the ark with you, every single living creature on earth, I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on earth. 
the sons of Noah who came out the ark were Shem, Ham and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These were the three sons of Noah, and from them came the people who were scattered over the earth. And they've got a song of the New Jerusalem. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth, the darkness the peoples. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land, or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor moonlight shine upon you, but the Lord will be your everlasting light, your God will be your splendour. For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises and above you God's glory appears. So we're moving on now to our New Testament reading and today it's from Matthew 25 and I'm going to be reading from verse 14 through to verse 30. Now this reading um, is a well-known one, it's the parable of the talents, um, a, you know, really well-known portion of scripture. And the meaning of the parable extends far beyond financial investment. God has given each person a wide variety of gifts and he expects us to employ those gifts in his service. It's not acceptable merely to put those gifts in a cupboard and ignore them. Like the three servants, we do not have gifts of the same degree, and the return God expects from us is comparable with the gifts that we have been given. The servant who received one talent was condemned not for failing to reach the five talent goal. He was condemned because he did nothing with what he was given. So the moral lesson of the parable of the talents is that we are to use our gifts and grow our gifts from God for his glory. So I'm reading Matthew 25, starting at verse 14. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one, he gave five talents, to another, two, and to another, one to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed me over five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, 
I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with 10 talents. For so all those who have more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even when they, what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now I've got the Benedictus. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Sorry, it's not the Benedictus, it's um, a song of the blessed. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people to set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of the servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you child shall be called the prophet of the most high and you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation in the tender compassion of God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. That's today is the fourth day of the week of prayer for Christian unity. Our intercessions today are for unity among God's children. Heavenly Father, we pray that in the midst of our diverse Christian net traditions, you will help make our unity visible and bring healing to the world. We pray that you with, pray that as we read your word in our diversity of language and context, that you will help make our unity visible and bring healing to the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we pray that as we establish relations of friendship among Jews, Christians and Muslims, and tear down the wall of indifference and hatred, that you will help make our unity visible and bring healing to the world. We pray that as we work for justice and solidarity and move from fear to confidence, that you will help make our unity visible and bring healing to the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we pray that as Christians work together to end suffering caused by war and violence, injustice and equality, disease and prejudice, poverty and hopelessness, that you will help make our unity visible and bring healing to the world. We pray that as we are witnesses to the birth of Jesus Christ in Bethlehem, his ministry in Galilee, his death and resurrection, and the descent of the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem, and we yearn for peace and justice for all in the sure and certain hope of God's coming kingdom, that you will help make our unity visible and bring healing to the world. 
gracious and loving God, bring all together who bear the name Christian, that we may be instruments of your peace and bring your healing to the world. We pray for all of our Christian brothers and sisters, especially for those who do not share the same beliefs, that their mutual love and affection might deepen their understanding of the mystery of Christ's presence in every Christian life. We pray that one day all Christians may gather around one table and share the fellowship of Holy Communion in the breaking of the bread. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect for today. Eternal God, Shepherd of your sheep, whose child Agnes was strengthened to bear witness in her living and her dying, to the true love of her Redeemer. Grant us the power to understand with all your saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love that surpasses knowledge. Even Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May Christ who sends us to the nations give us the power of his spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this morning and uh, Reverend Sarah will be with you next Friday and I will see you all in a fortnight's time. <laughs>